Did you know that your hair is 97% protein and only 3% moisture? Okay, so that doesn't really have anything to do with what I was gonna say, but I just wanna sound really smart for the beginning of this video. It's a beautiful day, it's a beautiful day with Radhi. Hey everyone. Okay, today let's talk hair. I'm no hair expert, but I can say I've made a whole lot of mistakes and my hair's looked very, very bad and also had its good times too. And I've definitely learned so much along the way. So I thought I'd share with you some of the tips that has got my hair to this point where it feels strong, healthy and lush. So let's start from washing. If you are washing your hair every single day, that is where you may be going wrong. I know first day hair can be like the luscious time where your hair looks its best, but it is damaging your hair also. It's stripping it of all the natural healthy oils that it needs to stay shiny and vibrant. So you can wean yourself off it by doing it once every two days, then once every three days. I personally wash my hair once every once a week maybe twice a week if i'm going out and the way i manage to do that is sometimes i'll do different hairstyles so if your hair is going greasy then do a little french plait a high bun a low bun there are so many different styles that you can do with your hair tied there's also dry shampoo if you use it but um, i really highly recommend um, reducing the amount of times that you are washing your hair that can really really help revive your hair allow it to breathe allow it to build up those natural oils that it needs to stay healthy. My next tip for you all is do not use conditioner on your roots. Your roots should have all the natural oils that it needs. And so when you're using conditioner, which is to soften your hair, you should just put it into the bottom of your hair and work your way up a couple of inches before your roots. That way you don't get buildup in your scalp and you nourish the parts that need it. While we're talking about washing your hair, what temperature do you wash your hair at? That is the real question. So I know some people say you should wash it with extreme cold water and I know some of you like that hot steamy water as well when you're washing your hair, but the best is always in the middle. Lukewarm water is exactly what your hair needs. It provides enough shine, but it doesn't dry out like hot water does. So when you're washing your hair out, make sure you're using lukewarm water. If you want an extra shine at the end, you can make it a little cooler, but I would recommend for general shampoo conditioner wash, keep it neutral. Last thing about washing your hair, I actually wash my hair upside down. I know that sounds like so much effort, but for volume in your hair and also to drain out a lot of the product, I find washing my hair upside down is the best. I'm sure you can imagine how awkward it feels, but it's worth it. I only do it on the days that I'm really going out and I want my hair to look extra voluminous. Next up, let's talk utensils that you are using in the shower, like your hairbrush. I actually don't use a hairbrush in the shower. I use my fingers and I run my fingers through my hair when I've got my conditioner in it. But if you are using hairbrushes, you have to be really careful with the type that you're using according to the type of hair that you have. For example, if you have curly hair like me, using a wide bristle brush is far better than using a thin comb. Actually using thin combs can end up breaking your hair, especially if you have a bad quality one like a plastic brush. Okay, so the next tip you are going to thank me for because I'm going to be telling you that you deserve a scalp massage every single day. Now, whether you're doing it for yourself or whether you're getting your partners or your friends to do it for you it is so good for your hair actually scalp massages help stimulate the hair follicles and help to increase the blood circulation and the blood flow to your hair follicles and what does that mean more nutrients get to your scalp which means the more your hair will grow it also helps relax the nerves going through your head but also helps with dryness of scalp too so all in all, it sounds like a winner. You can massage your hair dry, or you can use a few drops of lavender oil, or you can even use a lot of oil in your hair, which I'm gonna talk about later. So this is the best way to do an Ayurvedic scalp massage. So you start off by patting your head. Pat your head all the way around, top to bottom, side to side. And then you take your fingernails. Now don't use nails. If you've got your acrylics on, you've got your gels on, don't do this with your nails. Do it with your fingertips. And you are essentially going in circular motions all the way around your head, deeply, deeply pushing into your scalp. You'll feel so good from it. I also find I do this when I feel like I've got too much tension at the back of my head and it really releases it straight away. So you're just doing this all the way around your head and I guarantee you, you'll feel like a brand new person after. 
So let's talk products. I use vegan and cruelty-free products mainly because I don't believe that an animal should have to suffer for me having a good hair day. I just don't think it's necessary. And there are so many wonderful products out there that are vegan and cruelty-free and also don't have all the added nasties. Now, if you end up buying bad quality products, it actually causes buildup in your hair. So it makes it sticky, heavy, but also causes long-term damage. So here is the 101, the down low on the three main things you need to look out for when you are buying products and that you 100% should avoid. Numero uno, we are talking sulfate. Sulfate is a fancy word for all that bubbly bubbly, frothy stuff that comes out of the shampoo. And yes, it feels so good to have it lathered in your hair and you see the bubbles and it feels cute, but no. No, you should not be using sulfate in your shampoo. Firstly, it will dry your hair out immensely and if you already have dry hair and you're using a shampoo with sulfate, it's going to make it very, very stringy and um, rough. Sulfates are pretty much stripping your hair of all your natural oils and so you really don't need that in your shampoo. Just a heads up, sometimes they are called SLS. So if you're looking at products and it says SLS free, that's what you need. Next up, we have number two, which is parabens. So parabens actually help our products last longer. And that's great because you don't really want gone off product in our hair, but we have to be careful because they actually can seep into our scalp, which remember is our skin. Our skin actually absorbs every single thing that we put onto it. And so it's seeping into our body and actually parabens have been linked to hormonal imbalances and damaging internal organs too. So we are looking for paraben free shampoos and conditioners too. Lastly, we have our silicones. Silicones actually are the things that make our hair look shiny and you flick your hair about. It looks sparkly fresh and um, super glowy. But it actually causes a lot of buildup. Actually, when you end up washing your hair and sometimes you feel like no matter how much you wash it, the product kind of stays in the roots of your hair. That, my friend, is your silicones. So we are looking for sulfate-free, paraben-free and silicone-free shampoo and conditioners. To be honest, the more natural, the better. Every single thing, like I said, that you put onto your hair, your skin is gonna seep into your body. So really, we want things that are as close to nature's ingredients as possible. Now, there are many, many ways that you can make simple shampoos and conditions at home, but I haven't got to that stage yet. So I thought I'd share with you the products that I found that are free of all of those three things and they are as natural as possible. So we have products like True Botanicals, Rahu, Fable and Main, Love, Beauty Planet, and Alafia. And actually a lot of these brands, they also give back to the world in some way. Some of them support um, rainforests, others support um, endangered animals. And I think Alafia actually support children in need too. So I really think that as well as benefiting your hair, you're also benefiting the world in some way too, which is fabulous. My next tip for you all is about oiling your hair. Now, that's a very Eastern tradition. In Ayurveda, it is a must for good quality hair. In India, you will find people actually walking around on the street with oil in their hair because it's such a deep part of tradition and roots. So I recommend that you oil your hair once or twice a week. It really helps nourish it deeply and you can leave it on for 30 minutes up to overnight. Sometimes I'll put it in in the evening before I go to bed and I'll wash it off in the morning. Okay, but let me give you a tip to save you the trouble because I made this mistake so many times. Make sure you put shampoo into your hair before you go into the shower to wash the oil out. Oil and water do not mix. And so if you end up trying to wash the oil out just with water, you're gonna be left with the oil in your hair for decades. In Ayurveda, traditionally it's recommended to use herbal medicated oil and to make sure that you warm the oil before you put it onto your scalp. This really allows for the oil to seep deep into your tissues. So if you want to make these oils at home, Ayurveda recommends these three herbs that are very, very good for your hair. The first one is Amla, the second is Bringaraj, and the third is Brahmi. You can get them in powder form and dissolve them into your oil and then heat it up and pour it in. Or if you don't want to make them at home, there are some wonderful Ayurvedic inspired brands that have hair oils ready made for you. Two of the ones that I use often are Sahajan and Ranava. And they have beautiful, good quality ingredients. So for all my curly haired girls, let's talk drying your hair. I found this trick has been absolutely vital in the amount of frizz that goes on at the top of my mane. 
I use a cotton t-shirt to dry my hair. I don't use towels anymore. I find that they actually increase the frizz and sometimes they can damage your hair if they're not made from great materials. So a cotton, pure cotton t-shirt is great for your locks. And remember to grab your husband's favorite t-shirt to do this. Another tip for my curly haired friends, I would highly recommend using a diffuser. Now, what is a diffuser? A diffuser is that random piece of equipment that you sometimes get with your hair dryers that's round and has spokes and that you probably won't ever use if you have straight hair. But for curly hair, it is essential. It's great to reduce frizz when you're drying, but also when you use a normal hair dryer, it kind of dampens your curls, whereas the diffuser helps bounce them up as they should be. Now, last but not least, and actually probably the most important one, I highly recommend starting a meditation or relaxation practice. Our stress or anxiety can really affect our physical body. And a lot of the times, hair fall, dry hair, or any kind of hair issues are related to emotions or the way that we are treating our body internally. So try a meditation relaxation practice to really help calm your anxiety. And I'm sure you will see a physical difference too. So those are my key tips for healthy, luscious hair. Now remember, these are all just external things. And as much as we can keep putting things onto our external body, we have to treat ourselves from the inside out. So if you wanna learn how to nourish your body from the inside out and really produce vitality in your body, then I have so many wonderful recipes with spices and herbs and fresh ingredients that can really help nourish you deeply. And hopefully that will show out on the outside too. Just like a Japanese horror movie. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha